Aloha and welcome back to Practical Printing and welcome to part 13 of our Rostock Max V 3.2 build series. If you're not caught up on the series I suggest you pause here and go back and check out the earlier episodes so that you're caught up with where we're at in the build process. There is a link in the description down below to the manual if you'd like to follow along. If you're not familiar with the CME CNC line of Delta printers there's a link to their website also in the description down below. So with all that said, let's do it. Okay, so at the end of the last segment, we finished up building the top out by installing the easier strutter, the heated bed and hot end fuse panel, and getting the, all of that wired up and then installing the top. Now it's time to move back to the electronics on the base. For this to get started, you're going to need the switch panel or the IEC panel. You're going to need the IEC connector, the fan, and the switch as well as the M314 and M322 screws and the two O-rings for the fan. So let's switch cameras and get started assembling that. Okay, so once you have all your pieces out, we're going to position the plate in this orientation so that you have the switch, the fan, and the IC. We're gonna start off by with the switch by taking the nut off of it and we're going to slide that into the hole it should just fit in you want to try to get it square and then you're going to just take the nut on the back and tighten it back down like so no reason to go over tight now you have a switch we're going to move to the fan I'm sorry, the IEC connector next. And so the IEC connector is going to go with the ground pin, this one facing towards the outside. So it's going to go in this orientation, like so. And we're going to use the M314 screws and nuts for that. These look like they're going to be a number one screwdriver for these. So we're just going to slide these through the hole. Use our fingers to hold them on and lightly thread those on. as far as you can with your finger. Okay, then we're going to use our channel locks, which need, I'm sorry, uh, vice grips or whatever tool you have of preference. We're going to lightly grab that and we're just going to tighten those up. This takes care of step 52. with those done. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is install the fan. And the fan needs to be set so that the it will blow out through the panel, so we want the fan to exhaust in that direction. Which tells me if there's any direction indicators on the fan. There we go. There's direction indicators there on the fan, so we want the label towards the plate. So it's going to go in this orientation, like so, with the labeling down. Okay, for this we're going to use the M322 screws, like 
like this. And the O-rings. And the way it's going to work is we're going to put our two screws in from this side. Put our fingers on it to hold it down. Slide the O-rings over them. We're going to slide the fan on top, like so. Make sure that your wiring is not trapped in there. And then we're going to lightly thread these nuts on as far as we can with our hands. Going to grab the appropriate sized hex tool, which is going to be this guy here. And our vice grips, and we're going to grab that nut like so, and we're going to tighten these up. Okay, that is done. Make sure that our wiring all comes through the correct hole and didn't shift out there. And there we go. Okay, we're going to set this down for now. And now we're going to look at pre-installing the wiring for this. So let's grab the parts that we're going to need for that. Okay, so in your wiring bundle, you should have five of these spades, five of the rings. You should have one green wire, two blacks, and a white wire. Each of these wires has one end that's slightly pre-slipped, uh, pre-stripped going to give it a little bit of twist and pull the end off and we're just going to put a spade on one end like so and then we're going to crimp it down and you want to give it a tug test make sure that your wire doesn't come out and we're going to set each of these aside as we do that If you screw one up, you can pick these up easily at your local hardware store or Amazon or other electronic reseller retailer of choice. They are a very generic product. You just need to make sure that you get the right size for this wiring. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and strip the other end and repeat the process with the ring connectors. All right. Well, it looks like somebody was expecting me to screw up. They provided one extra each of these, so I'm going to set them aside just in case. But all of these tested out good. So now we're going to go through and plug those into this board. Right here. And maybe those aren't extra. We'll find out later. If you look at the picture in the manual that you're building from, it will show you where to put these, but it's going to start with the green on the ground, and you'll hear a click as it goes in. Black on the bottom here, which goes to the center. Oh, I screwed that up. How do you like that? Okay, we'll come back to that guy. This black one um, was the longer of the two, wasn't it? Now I know why there's extras, I guess. So this one this one needs to come off. There we go. Okay, before I do anything else, let me fix this one. This long one is going to go to 
the top one here, like so. This shorter one that was the jumper between the two should have had two of these. So I need to either cut that off or see if I can loosen the connector. So I'm just going to snip that off, I guess. Strip it back. And put the proper spade connector on it. And recrimp it. There we go. Now this can go here between the switch and there. And that is done. Our wiring is a success. Make sure that they're all seated good. And we're golden. Uh, and these two red ring terminals were supposed to go on to the fan leads here. That's why we have extras. So we don't. So I screwed up. All right, so let's crimp this on to this one. These are actually much too large for this. So I'm going to show you guys a trick that might work here. I'm going to strip this back double the length. I'm going to fold it in half to double the volume of that size. And we're going to slide this on here like so. We're going to get it into our crimper like so. And we are going to crimp like an Olympian. And it grabs. All right, hold that thought. Let me dig into my spares to see if I have another one of these. Okay, I don't have a spade, but I have a lug. And it is the same width, so it will have to do. Uh, we're not dealing with the AC voltage mains here. We're just dealing with a fan, so I'm comfortable using that instead. That is my mistake. But we're going to do the same thing strip off an extra piece of wire fold that over like so slide it in and crimp like an Olympic athlete but for now that's good Adapter and overcome. Okay, so our next step is to break out the printer and wire this to the printer. So let me set this aside and let me grab the printer and we'll do that next. Okay, so we're going to position with this with the switch facing that direction in the same direction as the LED on the power supply. And there's one, two, three, four, five connections that we're going to make to this. These three are going to be AC connections. Those are going to be your mains. And these, the fans are going to go to the 12 volts. So looking at this, let's go ahead and pull off the screws that we're going to need to, t to do. That's going to be these three here labeled ground, neutral, and load. Okay, and then we are going to remove the positive that's available and one of the two grounds, or the voltage positive and the voltage minus. I'm just going to loosen up the voltage minus here just a hair since we're using the, uh, the spade underneath it to slide that in. So as a matter of fact, let's do that one first. We're just going to take that and 
slide it in, make sure it's down all the way. Now obviously the rings are better because they give you more contact and more surface area, but this is our next best thing, especially since we had it conveniently handy. We'll do the 12 volts positive next. Now, my order on these terminals may not necessarily match your order, may not necessarily match the pictures in the guide as far as which one's on which end. Uh, the reality is that, I'm knocking that thing all over, the reality is that it doesn't matter what order as long as the plus 12 volts are on plus 12 volt and the minus 12 volts are on minus 12 volt. The AC lines, however, are particular in the direction that they need to be. So let's go ahead and pull those out. And we're going to start off with the black, which is our main or our line. Lift that and try to get it to quiet down a bit. We're going to slide that one through. And you're going to tighten that down good. Give it a tug test. The next one is going to be the white, which is your neutral. And it's going to go to the N terminal. And last but not least, our green, which is going to go to the earth ground, or AC ground, which is our third one in. Okay, and we're now just going to give each of these a little tug just to be safe one last time. Make sure everything's good, including what we did previously. Now, we can finish this step off by rotating the printer up and attaching this plate to the side. Um, and it's important that when you do that, that you do not pinch any wires. So let's go ahead and pull the camera up and I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to make sure that none of these wires here are pinched as we pull this up through. Set it down. We're going to grab two of our hex screws, drop one of them. Mandatory, you have to drop one, it says it in the manual. Okay, it doesn't really. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten these down. Of course, we're going to finish these off by hand. Okay, those are good. Now we can stand it back up. We are one step closer to getting done. There we go. We are now through step 57. We're done working on the power bay. You do again want to double check that none of your wires are loose at this point. Make sure everything's good and make sure that there's nothing pinched. And we are done down in that section of it. So congratulate yourselves there, and we'll move on from there. Okay, that wraps this up. The next step we are going to be on is step 58, where we start the bed installation. We're going to call it quits for now, and we'll pick that up in the next episode. Again, special thanks goes out to CNC for providing the Rostock Max V3.2 kit for us to build for this build series. 
If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe down below and ring that bell so you're notified when the next section of the series is out. Be sure to check out our other videos if you're new to the channel. And we'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.